Hello, Patreon friends. Welcome to Last Call of Cthulhu. We have started the beginning of the end of our story. Uh, once again, uh, shadows over still water, never happening. <laughs> you just throw that into the litter box? <laughs> no, I missed the litter box. But... Oh, phew. That's good. Uh, well, no, let's just burn through the rest of this and get to uh, Cthulhu G.I. Joe. Let's this just is the yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the issue, Ezra, is that is that you dropped this massive hammer on us with everything with with, with the, the, the the Kobayashi Maru, uh, Maru oh, or however the yeah. fuck you pronounce that, Jeez. and then expected us to give a shit about anything else oh, afterwards. I had no expectations. I <laughs> okay. you know, I go. I go where you guys, I'm just going where you guys lead and I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm kind of curious about the house, about the ghost house, but. Uh... So uh, that was 100% just like, I'm like, ah, it's Halloween. We should do a ghost story. If they want to do it, we'll do it. If we nah. don't. Eh. Nah. But then I brought the ghosts in for day of the dead. Yeah. yeah. No, that was good. I like that. Uh, but it, when you've already got a zombie strapped to your wagon yeah it, yeah it really... i don't have time for ghosts <laughs> yeah um you better hope the guy doesn't come back alive that's you know you know we know that, why we care that falls that falls very squarely under not my problem yeah i was about to say and how long is it going to take hank to shamble into mexico to find us um, luckily they're not, the, the dead are not following you. The dead are just generally rising. And it was indeed the fireworks as you, as you surmised. Mm. Sweet. Yeah. Now, so I what were the crystals? Were the, the crystals, crystals just... were listening devices that the great oh. race used to like, so the whole town was basically an experiment and the great race was experimenting with chemicals and with, uh, uh, uh various weapon types. And then they film it and they use these uh, crystals to record it. And um, the, guy in, the guy in the room next to yours was actually a, a serpent man. He was oh, wow. uh, one of the, um, and that's what that noise you kept hearing was him communicating back to uh, mm -hmm. uh, his, his superiors about You're what- not exactly on. giving us reasons to not go and shoot just every weird person that we meet. <laughs> Well, this is this is still water. I mean, it, yeah, right. this is it. This isn't Ezra's fault. This is just whatever monster created the still water. Like, yeah. Not, yeah. Just... Well, who, can, I, who, on, who on social media can we blame for that? <laughs> I think mm. is it Lynn Hardy? No, it's uh, Kevin Ross is the guy's name. Ah, By the way, okay. I'm very excited. Um, in a couple weeks, I I'm gonna have uh, Chris Spivey who did Harlem Unbound and now has um, a new. Uh, Weird West uh, RPG coming out that Ooh. is that looks really cool. He's going to be on my podcast. I'm looking forward to talking with him about uh, running weird games in the old West. He's got uh, some really neat stuff in there. I, I was actually in Games of Berkeley today, and I had a peek at Harlem Unbound that was there. Oh, it's fantastic. It is Harlem Unbound is the best Cthulhu book ever made. It is so good. Uh, High I mean, praise. It's, it's great. Um, I <laughs> well, what are we doing? <laughs> Not Harlem. Not Harlem. Although mm. they're they're like he he talks about how you can weave a bunch of scenarios together to make a Harlem Unbound campaign, essentially, which I think is kind of a cool idea. Mm. Um, although some of it involves going to New Orleans. There's a couple of fantastic scenarios that take place in New Orleans, uh, which is you know just a good town to base. Oh anything. yeah, oh, there's yeah. a lot of weird there. Yeah, there. New Orleans is. I I lived cool in New weird, Orleans though. in the cool. '90s, and oh, it's yeah? just bizarre. Like, uh, in the '90s, now it's probably changed, but it was like a third world country. Uh, just things wouldn't work. Like my phone didn't work for a week, and so I walked down to the local drugstore and I called the phone company, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're real sorry about that." <laughs> and they were very nicely credited my bill for the days that I did not have phone service, but I did not have phone service. Wow. <laughs> Hope you didn't need it. It was the weirdest thing, that town. Uh, they have, so everybody knows about Mardi Gras, but St. Patrick's Day is actually the most dangerous day in New Orleans because there's an entire parade where drunk people throw cabbages. The main throw at the St. Patrick's Day Parade is cabbages. And so one of the teachers at the school that I worked at was like, 
hey, every year I have a party. And the, the idea of the party is we get cabbages thrown at us and then we all cook something with the cabbages. And Actually, so stomped on by everything. Every so every you year she it. gets a bunch of people together and you go and you get cabbages and you collect them. Um, but like it's New Orleans and people are drunk. So like I saw with my own eyes two windows broken by cabbages. And it's just like <laughs> les bottes en brûlé. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Wow. Uh, a wow. game during so it's like it's like dodgeball rules, right? Yeah, that's, so you yeah, have to that's catch right. The yeah, if you catch it, yeah. you can cook it. You can make stuff with it. Nom, um, nom, nom, nom. I. Uh, it's funny that you now have a set po- way for dealing with undead. Yes, <laughs> you've become very good at transporting the undead. Oh wait, the re dead. The re dead. Catching on. The re dead. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're pretty Zombies good at corpse only. wrangling. <laughs> I, I, I I still love C- CFWs as an acronym. Yeah, I, I love, love it a lot. Yep. That's a good one. I the like CFWs. That. You know, you should just repurpose that to whoever's causing you trouble at any given time. You know? Or just the CFWs. They're just the CFWs. <laughs> especially, especially if they're doing it in a way that's trying to be manipulative, but you can just see right through it because they're idiots. Yeah, yeah. it's anything Illuminati, though. It covers all of the secrets. So, uh, so the doctor in yes. Stillwater. What a... Uh, Crazy, just. I mean, somewhat crazy. He so he wanted to know why they were coming back to life. Yeah, he was just yeah, like mean... you know, he was the epitome of soulless science. You know, he's like, I'm gonna figure out why this is, and, and I'm maybe gonna... he could use it. He could use it. Well, actually, yeah. he probably wants to stop it, but he's just fascinated by yeah. you know why it's happening. You know, he. Um, I look at him as oh, the epitome of the intelligence versus wisdom thing. Uh, I'm looking forward to having a character in the future read one of his books. <laughs> I I've, I can do all of the things. Should I do? I don't know, but I'm going to anyway. Yeah. Scientists spend, spend so much time thinking about whether or not they could. Right. What's yeah. the What's the old joke? Intelligence is knowing that uh, tomato is a fruit. Uh, wisdom is you know is not call, putting it in your fruit salad. Ah, but, ah, but but charisma is selling that fruit salad. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, is Khan eating it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, what else was going on in the town? Uh, yeah, the, the priest was like, uh, he was driven mad by everything. And he was, um, he was a raving religious lunatic. The poor, the poor laundry guy did none of this. Yeah. yeah like his huh. fireworks hit bottle rockets, you know. Um, and but was the witch, did she just find him? She wasn't actually a witch. She, just, wasn't, uh, she was not a witch. Teacher. Yeah. I actually, I, I, it took, I was like, who's the witch? I don't know who the witch is. <laughs> who's not a witch. <laughs> Sorry, in my notes, I just somehow some stuff someone was described. I just put a note like, "This is her name. She's a witch." And then I, I mean, mean, whenever I look back, I'm like, "I think she's a witch." Apparently, I mean, wh- wh- whenever I heard that, I was like, "Yeah, sure." A white dude is accusing a say relatively smart woman of being a witch. <laughs> I haven't seen that a million times in history. Well, I mean, we were talking about maybe the chimes were to keep things away, and that's where some of that you know idea came from. Yeah. Then we kept seeing the light coming through them at times, and that yeah, that weird times. And... So what was with that? That, that was, was when they were. Watching. That was when they were transmitting. Yeah, they were watching. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, when they light up, that was the because I think the only one you really saw light up was outside that guy's window. When right. He was transmitting. Right. Right. Uh, we Got also it. there were some there were some other times where we saw that we were being. Watch. Yeah, yeah, like you, because you saw a particular like one that seemed to be following you, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so that like the entire kind of conceit of the module is that that whole town is a uh, uh, is just an, a, a a research project for the uh, for the great race as they're uh, studying the effects of this stuff and trying to figure out how effective it will be as a weapon, um, and. And they release, uh, they they actually bring up the Walking Dead to see like how people respond to that and if that's a potential weapon, that sort of Dang, thing. Okay. A lot mm-hmm. of beating the ever living fuck out of things. That's yeah. how humans react to that. Yeah. Shooting them, shooting them, shooting them. <laughs> yeah, the funny part was like, you know, you guys being seasoned adventurers quickly caught on to the whole bullets don't do much. But the people in town were just like, just keep shooting. <laughs> but it seemed to work after yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I really like the idea. One of the things the game, uh, the module suggests is like, if the players stay in town for a while, the dead rise again. And so the same bodies come back. Oh, and I was God. like, oh, 
and like anybody else that you killed in that time will come back and like uh, how I've... are we going to stay in there another minute <laughs> no like Susanna yeah. had to be convinced to even go into the town in the first place yeah she... that's right yeah done yeah is yeah done yeah. had wanted, enough she wants to get that... the tablet out of her possession and get away from these fucking weirdos I guess a, a quite you know so you we had to go get Hank Hanratty as a as a McGuffin. mission that gets us into Stillwater right but that had nothing to do with being in Stillwater so we're like oh we've finished our mission and actually and we're the Hanratty thing is written into the module that's like oh, okay. uh, that's like the hook that gets you into it yeah uh, so uh, I don't know there's something about having an objective like that and being able to finish it and then just be like, I don't know what to do with it. I mean, you have yeah. to you have to have characters that are actually really motivated to one, put their necks on the line. To just you know, it a, up to, yeah. And to, and to and me, and Ramsey and said this, you know, uh, you know, Julie said this with Ramsey saying, like, well, if, you know, we it, it'll spread if we don't stop it here. Right. Well, and, and to be fair, if we had started with this, if we had actually done Stillwater in Stillwater, mm. there's a greater chance that we would have seen more of the things because we would have been less jaded. Right. I think is the word I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an interesting thing. You know, you I, you know, I have been at tables where the players are crusaders and they're just like, we have to save every and I've been at tables where they're like, can't help you, sorry. You know, and really you can't you know i i i don't think it's all it's not always oh there i know they're going to do this or oh i know they're going to do that and so you know you just sort of are like if they want to go with it we'll do it if they don't we'll have something else ready to go no i think we have a mix in our group you know sometimes we say oh yes we have to do this and other times we're like yep we got this thing by bye yeah, i think that's right yeah that's right. it's it's priorities yeah I think, most of the time it's like if we have other priorities it's i mean it's, it's like with the train where it's like Good luck sorting this out on Hitch. Bye. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, and, and, I, go ahead. I try and keep it to what is our main priority. And does this in any way further that mission? Because if it doesn't, then I don't need to do it. And I just try and keep remembering, how does this tie in? If it doesn't tie in, then it's not, it's not my, unless it's impeding my progress to that goal, then it's not our problem. Well, and, yeah. and, and and to that point, I think that going straight into what was going on in Stillwater straight off of our Kobayashi Maru was kind of a mistake, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I think that is, I think there's definitely something to that. Uh, you know, I think that um, not giving that the time to breathe and to, you know, and to, to uh, not giving that the time, the sort of the chance to build and sort of you all to deal with it um, was was probably not uh, the best was probably not the best decision. Hmm. I'm yeah, just I, thinking, I, yeah. Thank I, God I, we I, didn't have to deal with the zombie family that we that that oh would have God. been like yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, I, I that's what I was. Th that's what I personally was thinking was going to happen. It was that that we were going to have to deal with that and and um that was going to be the thing um well, that, yeah i mean my my character likes to help people i mean that's the whole reason why they do the stagecoach thing and everything they, they're helping people helping people so trying to get to find that balance is well, and running I, into danger <laughs> I, I i was talking to james about this uh afterwards because I, I was still trying to process all of my thoughts and feelings about it and i was like you know i think the reason that it hit me so hard with the kobayashi maru scenario was because it felt like it was actually our fault like I don't, I don't usually feel like most of what happens is actually our fault because most of the time Ezra is just fucking with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this time it felt like it was actually our fault, and it was normal humans, and we could have done something to stop it. And I think that's why it hit me so hard. And then with the, you know, man, man, man burst in with a gun at the end, kind of undermined that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean that that was the yeah, the whole point of that scenario is is the real is the having the real people aspect of it and the real human emotion and that sort of thing. Um and and to that point then layering in the supernatural and also the like, you know, the like and right after that something happens. Yeah. Well, it's sauce for the goose. It didn't it didn't really uh uh, uh add, it didn't add much. Yeah. Um uh but you know Sometimes you just throw something in the wall and hope it sticks. 
doesn't always stick. And sometimes it doesn't. That's, you know, life lesson for GMs. Yeah. It was still, there, there was a, there was a poignancy to it that I, I have to appreciate. And like, I, it's weird. Cause I don't want to saying like, I'm glad that it happened is definitely the wrong way to say it, but there was, there was value in it happening. You're talking about the family thing now. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Oh yeah. Not, yeah. not the follow on. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, I, think, I, I think there was, but we haven't addressed it. And I think that we're not going to, because now we've just buried it so hard under weeks of travel that it's not going to come up again. Yeah. But I think like for me as a player and as a character, that was that last straw that was like, no, 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 we have, we have to take this tablet back, finish this. I'm going to go back to Reno, get married, be done with this. Like my character's done. Yeah. With Cthulhu mythos, right? So and I, and, like, and I yeah. And so I said the guy almost, marrying a werewolf. And, and, <laughs> and, and, I, and I said almost exactly the same thing last week that that this was the last straw for Susanna was very much a, after this, she's done. And she's not even gonna stick in Reno. She's just gonna disappear into the West. Go back and be the federal marshal. Travel the roads. Well, we're getting some, you know, we're getting some sneak peek patrons. You're getting sneak peeks at the where are these characters in two years uh, <laughs> that I always love to end with. Uh, thank you so much for all you do for Quests and Chaos. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I saw that you guys have a game, uh, the the uh, the guild game coming up soon. That's uh, mm-hmm. yes. on the seventh, I believe. On the seventh, it's a Sunday. Someday, someday, maybe it won't be D and D. Well. Come and run something. Carbon 2185. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, oh, man. I ran last weekend. I ran my brother and a couple other friends uh, through a, a, a totally made up on the fly module of the new of the new paranoia. So Ooh. much fun. Oh, the players ended up guarding something that wasn't there. They were told they were guarding a nanobot, but there was nothing there. Kind and they like kept worrying Knox. about like a gust of wind. <laughs> Like knocked it off its pedestal, and they're like, "How can you tell?" Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, like someday. you just throw in the like Fort Knox like conspiracy theory, in there. <laughs> <laughs> and the frogs too. <laughs> frogs, drones. <laughs> oh man! All right. <laughs> On that note, goodbye, Patreon friends. Bye. 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 Bye.